Hey YouTube, this is Alexander, and a few days ago I gave you guys my thoughts on what I think we would see at Google I.O. this year, and what I had hoped we'd, we'd see, and now that it has come and gone, I think it's a good time to go ahead and tell you guys what I think about what we actually did see, and uh, especially cover some of the Android L. So let's go ahead and get started. So they announced a lot of different things. Uh, first and foremost, uh, we're talking about Android Wear, Android TV, Android Auto, Android One, and Android L. Uh, I believe that was everything for the most part that they covered. Uh, the Android Wear, basically three new smartwatches. We got the LG G Watch, we got the Samsung Gear Live, and the Moto 360. Moto 360 actually isn't available yet, not till this summer will it be available. Uh, we've got the LG G Watch, which I believe starts at 229, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and then we also have the Samsung Gear Live, which I believe is 199. Now the G Watch looks to be the most appealing out of the two that are available right now, just because something about that design that Samsung goes with for their watches I just don't really like, that little metallic looking band around the sides. Uh, the fact that you can't just put it on a little magnetic station uh, to charge like you can the G-Watch. Uh, and the fact that Samsung might surprise us with uh, another operating system. <laughs> uh, jokes aside, I just don't really like the design of the uh, Gear Live. But that might just be me. Maybe you guys enjoy it. Uh, anyway, the Moto 360 looks to be the best uh, smartwatch available, or that will be available. Uh, it just looks really nice. It actually looks like a watch that regular people and not just geeks or people who follow this stuff uh, passionately would wear. It looks really nice. Um, the, des the design just, it, it looks nice. So moving on, they also announced Android TV, which is essentially their second go around at getting in the living room or the bedroom, wherever you guys keep your TVs, and giving you content on a TV. So you can do things like play games, you can watch movies and TV. Uh, it's, like I said, their second attempt. Hopefully they get it right this time. They announced a couple partners on stage. I don't believe there was anything said about pricing or availability. A very early stage, I, get, I think, that they showed. And it looks to be coming along pretty nicely, but I, for one, don't watch a lot of TV, so it's not really that exciting for me. Uh, I mean, I, I got my TV right here, and these guys can see it's smaller than my monitor because I mostly watch things on my desktop rather than TV. I got like one show that I watch every Tuesday night on TV, but that's it for the most part, and I don't really game a lot, so it's something that wouldn't really cater to me, I guess. Uh, in a huge way, but maybe it would for you guys. Let me know if you guys are excited down below with a comment. Uh, next up, they also announced Android Auto, which is essentially their take at getting inside the car with Android. So they really, really want to be everywhere. Uh, they've got the Android Wear for your watches. They've got Google Glass. Who knows where they're going with that? They didn't say anything at uh, Google I.O. They got the Android TV. They got Android Auto. Uh, they've got the Android One for emerging markets. They just have a lot of different things everywhere. I feel like they're trying to get their reach out as far as possible. And it's Google. I mean, that's what they're going to do. That's what they're going to try to do. But I hope that they do this stuff right. That way it can be everywhere because it'd be pretty cool to have the same OS for the most part everywhere that you go for all of your devices, everything that you use if you're invested in that ecosystem. That'd be really nice for those people. Anyway, back to Android Auto. Uh, they do have uh, Android in the car, which is essentially something that's going to give you directions, allow you to search for places. Uh, you can stream music from your device. Uh, and I believe it'll be able to read text messages and possibly handle calls in some way. I could be wrong about that though, I do not remember honestly, but it does look nice. And uh, the little demo that they showed on stage, if you guys watched it, was kind of funny. Uh, also, I'll leave a link down below to Google I.O. in case you guys didn't see it. I'll leave a link to the keynote so you guys can watch it in full. They also announced Android One, which currently some people think is the reincarnation or sort of presentation of Android Silver in its official form. Some reports say that Android Silver is still coming as a separate thing. Uh, Android One is actually for emerging markets. It's really, really cheap hardware uh, for emerging markets like India uh, and those places. And it's going to be running stock Android. They've got things like dual SIMs for those types of countries that use them. Uh, they've also got micro SD card support, which was kind of weird coming from Google. But stock Android for more people is a good thing. Cheap hardware is a good thing. Uh, so hopefully that will work and they can get their hands over to more uh, markets with the stock Android because that'd be pretty cool. I'm all for stock Android being in more people's hands. And last but not least, Android L. Perhaps the biggest thing that they talked about, the thing that I was most excited for, the thing that I thought we actually wouldn't see, and then Sundar came out and said that we actually would a day before. But I was really, really excited for it and it is just 
blown my mind so far how awesome it looks. It just looks really, really nice. I'm liking the shadows. I like the name of it, Material Design. That's a pretty cool name. I like what they're doing with it with the card interface being taken to the next step. I like the notification shade. Uh, I like the, the quick toggles. Um, I like the multitasking. I like pretty much everything about it. The colors don't bother me. I know there's a lot of war going on, some heat between different operating systems and what they look like and what they don't look like. But it just looks really nice once you look at it. I really enjoy it. And the one thing though that I would say I do not like and that I really, really hope is just placeholder are those nav buttons at the bottom. The triangle possibly is easy to know, you know, it's back. The circle, I don't know how anybody would know what that is unless they used it. Same thing for the multitasking or the square button. I mean, sure, after you've used it maybe once or twice, five minutes, you'll know which one is which, but it just seems really out of place. Uh, I mean, you could always change those if you're rooted, of course, with soft keys or other ways, but it just, it just doesn't fit for me. Uh, the second thing, I guess, so there are two things I don't really like about it. The second thing would be how the nav bar is still black inside apps. I just don't understand that. If you're going to have the status bar change to a darker version of one of the uh, colors inside the app to sort of match it, why not do that for the nav bar or at least make the nav bar transparent? Do something with it. It just seems really out of place when it's black inside of a really brightly, beautifully colored dialer it just sort of deters from the really nice looking uh, interface that they're trying to go for, I feel. Uh, hopefully they'll bring some color, something will be done with that nav bar to sort of make it fit in with the rest of the operating system because there aren't really any more blacks. Even the settings has sort of gotten a facelift to be a lot lighter. So hopefully that black goes away and hopefully we see new nav buttons. The new nav buttons isn't really a big deal to me though. If we don't see new ones, it's fine, but I really want to see that uh, black color in the nav bar just just die off that doesn't need to be there. So if any of you guys are wondering, I am probably not going to flash the developer preview on any of my devices just for the simple reason that those are my daily drivers and apparently this is not really daily driver material. Certain, certain apps won't work with it. There can be uh, unknown bugs, bugs that are going to come out and I don't really need to deal with that right now uh, since those are my uh, daily drivers, but if they do release a preview for the N4 or any of the other devices I have, I'll definitely be flashing it and I will definitely be having a review of Android L once it comes out, so you guys can definitely stay tuned for that. So overall, it was pretty cool I.O. I really enjoyed it. Uh, it was just really fun seeing everybody up there uh, talking about the Android Wear, talking about Android L, talking about just pretty much everything that they talked about, how Google is basically trying to get their reach out to as many people as possible with Android. Such a flexible operating system, I really enjoyed it. So that's pretty much gonna wrap up this video. That was my thoughts on pretty much everything in Google I.O., especially Android L, something that I'm really, really excited for if you guys don't already know. Uh, that's pretty much gonna end the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe down there for more. And also be excited, you Nexus owners, because the head of Android engineering just came out and said that those rumors about the Nexus line dying are not true, essentially. So you guys can definitely be excited for that if you guys enjoy using Nexus devices as much as I do. So that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I will catch you in the next one. Peace.